This is a short lesson on Timeline JS, a digital tool that allows you to create interactive timelines that can then live on the internet. Uh, a lot of historians avoid using timelines. Uh, it's something we learned to do when we were younger. It might be something that we used to organize our thoughts, but we rarely use timelines as a way to express ideas, tell stories, and visualize a historical narrative. But timelines can be really powerful tools for historians. And before we jump into the digital tools that we have available, I just want to look at one visualization from the 19th century that helps get the point across about how uh, an, a complex and interesting timeline can tell uh, a pretty layered story. So this is a map from 1869. Uh, it's called, uh, or it was done by the uh, engraver Minard, and this tells the story of Napoleon's march to Moscow in 1812 to 1813. And if you take a second to look at this, you'll see that the core of this is a map. On the left-hand side, you can see a river here, you can see some rivers that get crossed here, and you can see Moscow in the east here. And what this is, is a map of Napoleon's armies and the size of the line represents the size of the army. So if you look a little closer, you can see at the beginning of the march, we had about four, a little over 400,000 people marching. And as he marched east, you know, when the army broke into different sections or, um, when the weather was bad or there was sickness, the army shrunk and shrunk and shrunk as the army moved east. So that by the time it got to Moscow, the army's size was only 100,000. And then the black line represents the march back. So in some ways, this is a timeline visualization. This is a sequence of times. And you can get a sense of the sequence of times by looking underneath here. If we scroll in here, um, we have dates and we have temperatures, and we can see uh, the, the changes in temperature that the armies faced as they moved east over across these dates. So we have time, we have army size, we have dates, we have geography. This is a really complex bit of information that is condensed into one easily accessible visualization. This is one of the classic examples of great visualization. We're going to talk about only one type of visualization today, the timeline, but in our digital world, we're able to do some complex things as well. So I wanted to start with this to give you some sense of how powerful a visualization can be when we're telling historical narratives and thinking about moving beyond simply the text as a way to tell our historical narratives. So back to Timeline.js. So Timeline.js allows us to make digital interactive timelines. The JS stands for JavaScript. So that is what the base operating uh, language is, but that's not something you really need to worry about now. That's only something that if you wanted to do some more advanced changes to the timeline, you could take advantage of. What uh, this uh, program asks us to do is put information into a spreadsheet and then it will visualize that information. And, and this is kind of what the output looks like here. This is one of the examples that Timeline.js gives us. This is uh, their timeline of revolutionary user interfaces. This is kind of perfect for our digital public history course here. You can see that in the top portion of the screen, you're going to see text and images or some kind of multimedia. And then at the bottom part of the screen, you're gonna see your timeline. So you can actually scroll across your timeline and see all the things that are in the timeline. Uh, if you're a user, you can just click from one thing to the next and move from the past to the present. This is really great because they can move back and forth here, so it's, it's interactive. But it also allows you to layer in multimodal storytelling. So here's a, a movie that you could layer in. You could layer in any text that you want here. So if you're telling a story from left to right, it can be really interactive and interesting for folks. But folks don't need to just use the arrows here. They can jump around. So 
if they wanted to, they could just click on this and it would move them into the timeline up into the future and they can move back and forth, you know, as much as they want here. So you're only limited by your own imagination here and the framework of the screen. You could put maps in here, you could put music in here, you can put social media posts in here, but at its core, uh, this is a left to right timeline story narrative. So while this particular example is pretty much just pointing to points in time, you can think beyond points in time. You can think of a multi-layered narrative that you could offer to users to tell different facets of a story, and you could actually color code these things down here for those different parts of the story. So how does this work? Well, this is one of the easiest tools you're going to use in digital humanities. Uh, what it requires you to do is make a timeline. So you click on the timeline here and it brings you down to the bottom and it's a four step process to making your timeline. So I'm gonna quickly go through this with you. If you follow the directions, you'll be able to do it yourself. So the first thing you need to do is click on this button to get the spreadsheet template. The spreadsheet template is a Google spreadsheet, so it will force you uh, to log into your Google account. So you'll need a Google account so you can download the spreadsheet template. I've already done that for us, and this is what you get. Now, you can change the name of the template, but you can't change the layout of the template. You can only fill in the information in the template here. And as you look from across the rows here, uh, you know, you have your years, months, days, time, uh, the beginning dates and the end dates here. And also you can choose your display date. So you can put the actual information in here, but choose whatever information you want in here. There's a headline, there's text, you know what that looks like already. This would, um, this would be the headline, this would be the text, right? And uh, you can put your media in here. You can see there's images from Flickr here. Um, this is a Vimeo image. You could put a YouTube video or YouTube uh, video in here as well. You want to make sure you have the rights to this stuff, or at least the media credits uh, for this, so that you can link to them properly. You can put a thumbnail. You should definitely be putting alt text in here to explain what the material is, if, especially if this is an image, it should have some kind of description of what the image is. Um, and then of course there's types. So um, the title card you'll want up here. So um, that's your first slide that kind of introduces your story. Uh, the other ones would probably not have a title here. And then you can change your background colors. You can change your background images. Uh, so there's, there's, there's some customization that you can do in here. Right now we only have three items which are pre-populated in here so you can get a sense of how everything looks, but uh, it's it's pretty much just, you know, follow the steps and repeat as you go through the timeline. Now, that's step one. Step two, after we've entered our information, is we wanna make this timeline available beyond our own computer. Uh, this gives Timeline.js access to our timeline so it can visualize it for us. So what we need to do is we need to go into our spreadsheet and go under File, Share, and Publish to Web. This is the thing that uh, puts it out there in the world for us. So um, you want the entire document more than likely, although you're only going to be using um, the first sheet, so you could choose that as well if you want, uh, and then you don't want to change this either, and you just click publish. Okay, there we go. And now we have a published document with a link. We want to copy this link by using control C here, or we can right click and copy if we want, and then we close it. We go back to our timeline, uh, JS, uh, our timeline JS settings here, and it says, okay, now for step three, we're going to copy and paste our spreadsheet URL into the box. So here we go. That's the spreadsheet URL we just generated. We can choose our width. We can choose our height. I wouldn't change these, at least not to start. Uh, you can do some advanced settings. You can change the language. You can change your fonts, default start slides. 
You can do various other things here. Again, that's a, a little bit more advanced settings. You don't need to worry about those just to get things started. And then what, what it does is generate a link for you to link directly to your timeline. So if we want to look at a preview of this, we can just open a preview in a new window. And here we are. This is our timeline that we've just created. So if we want, you'll notice whatever date instead of the date itself is listed here. And we can add whatever information or visualizations we'd like. And that is Timeline JS. Uh, if you go back here, you'll notice you can embed this into a website or some kind of um, online uh, uh, visualization uh, that you that you have. It could be your website. It could be a um, uh, an exhibition software, but uh, it's pretty easy to embed with 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 iframe. Uh, you just copy and paste it right into your um, right into your software, and you're good to go with your with your uh, with your with your timeline. So that's Timeline JS at the core of it, and this now gives you a really powerful tool for telling narratives using visualizations, using multimodal tools in a linear timeline way.